right. Let's move on to our next guest, which is a combination of really cool uh, childhood fulfillment of an idea. I I don't even know what category to put this guy in. But well, I tell you what, think back to when you were uh, a preteen, a kid, junior high, maybe younger, somewhere in that area. For me, I so wanted to have an arcade game. Full stand-up arcade game or pinball machine. Mm-hmm. And now as an adult, I do. I got one, finally. But for Jared, who's on the phone with us, he always loved Chuck E. Cheese and the little show that they do, the robots. But specifically, uh, I think it was the lion that was in Chuck E. Cheese's band, the lion who was Elvis. The king. The king. The king. Well, now as an adult, he's got... The the space and the means to do whatever the hell he wants, and somehow he was able to track down some of these Chuck E. Cheese anima- animated robots, and he calls them his own. Jared, did we accurately describe that? Is that a pretty good analogy? I think I was brought in a little late in the game. I just I just heard Chuck E. Cheese robots and uh, make him his own. <laughs> okay. Well, I said when I was a kid, I always wanted to have. An arcade game. And now I got a Donkey Kong machine at my house. You always wanted to have those animated robots from Chuck E. Cheese, specifically the king. And you now specifically the king. Yep. Now no one can tell you no. You've got the money, you've got the <laughs> space, and boom. First of all, Jer, where do you go to find robots from a Chuck E. Cheese? Well, uh, just just like the Tampa Bay Times said, it, it you know, I, I I saw it online in two thousand six on eBay. And uh, I, ever since uh, they, I was uh, traumatized when they took him out because that's all I cared about uh, with Chuck E. Cheese. I, I didn't get into the other robots. They moved too much like robots. I didn't get into showbiz. I liked The King and Rampage, the video, the arcade game. I, yeah. I, until Mortal Kombat came out, but that was after. But but uh, so that that was my you know I, that was it. And uh, so so yeah so I. I uh, you know, I uh, saw him on eBay uh, for $25,000. I was still going through college and uh, in an apartment. So I knew I was never going to get it. But I, but at that time on eBay, they you could actually contact the seller. They had the phone number, you know, back in the early oh, yeah. days. Yeah. And so I called them up and uh, I said, you know, man, I'm a, I'm a huge, you know, I can tell you what a bucket list item this would be. You know, is there any way for me to make payments? And he goes, uh, he was like, Look, man, just just call me when you win the lottery. Stop fucking. <laughs> so, so, Look, you know, man. Like, wow. Wow. <laughs> you right. got to have money, cash money. I don't want a bank yeah, here. Yeah, that's it. You know, but... he was from New York. And uh, and then, you know, I, so every three months, I would send him a picture of uh, me as a kid in front of the king. And finally, in 2015, he calls me up and he says, Jared. I have more pictures of you than I have of my grandchildren. <laughs> Look. He was like, enough already. This thing's all torn up. It's all, there's nothing left of it. He says, are you sure you want it? We'll, we'll let you make payments, whatever. My, my wife is bugging me. Just we, We'll make a dream come true. And I'm like, okay, great. And then he says, but I'm a Jew from New York, so you're not going to get it for free. Okay. Like, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as a Jew from uh, New know, York, that, he's probably got some pretty powerful people who make sure those payments arrive on time. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> what, exactly. You don't play around so, uh, with me, Jared Sanchez. I know where you live. <sighs> and, I'll give you some new shoes. <laughs> and they're made of concrete. <laughs> but still, they ain't the air variety. <laughs> but still, this is 10 years after your initial contact with the guy, so he hasn't sold it. He obvi- there's he obviously there's no market for this thing, so I hope you got it for considerably less than twenty five grand. Right, so I got it for ten thousand yeah. broken, and it is, but it is known as, as uh, the uh, the holy grail of animatronics, just because uh, it was ordered destroyed in the mid nineties, uh, and uh, and most of them were. Oh. Uh, so it is known as because anybody can get like a Jasper or a Helen Henny. You know, those are those are all around the the internet. Um, they're still rare, but this was the the whole deal. And of course, it wasn't the rarity that that attracted me to no. the king. You know, 
So it was kind of tough. So, I, yeah, I kept on uh, being persistent in a nice way, like, like Ark says. And, uh, and then he finally, you know, I found it uh, dilapidated on my, uh, uh, on my front uh, porch, uh, you know, <laughs> a pile of metal and old stuff. So it came delivered. It wasn't a local pickup only. And, and, oh, no, it cost $1,000 to come from New York uh, over here in a, in a semi. All right. And now, are you be before we continue on with your story because this isn't the only one that uh, this is just the beginning of your story. But, but uh, are, were you surprised at all? Because I am reading this story and now hearing you retell it, um, I, I'm continuously surprised by how much lack of sentimentality there is in the business world when it comes to things like this. History means nothing when History, it's time to move on. Boy, it just, I mean, they a store or a brand will just clear out everything and toss it aside to move forward in the name of progress without any idea that this stuff could be valuable to anybody. And then well, it becomes... knowing the, the, the magic that it can create, uh, and, and they didn't even touch that magic, in all honesty. If you look at old King videos that are on uh, YouTube right now, it, I'm, like, I'm, I'm surprised because I'm like, wow, they programmed that pretty uh, uh, just uh, carelessly, you know? It, yeah. It, but, but he had the potential to be so much more. I added more cylinders to him. And I knew nothing about pneumatics when I got this thing, okay? And it's not like there was a uh, freaking uh, any, any type of PDF or anything from even back then. Right. You can't call the geek squad and, hey, right. fix it. Yeah. <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay, wait a second. Like when, when, when it was first on eBay, he wanted $25,000, and that was 10 years ago. And I thought you yes. said they were working. Is that correct? These, the, uh, no. They no, were it not was working. Broken. Okay, and these right. are the animated figures from uh, from Chuck E. Cheese. Specifically, it's the it's King the the Lion. So they're not in working yes. order. Ten grand and a thousand dollars delivery. How big is it, right. the? Is it crated up or what? What kind of a box? Oh, yeah, he had to, he had to crate it up like uh, I think the neighbors thought I was buying a tiger or something. Uh, <laughs> you know. That's in the prone position. I don't know, but and you could say to him, "Tiger, please, it's, it's a, a lion." lion. <laughs> yeah, a lion. He's fantastic. Yeah, but uh, but no. So you know, I got it. It took me a year to restore. I, at first, I just uh, but I wanted something more. You know, just because I got it working, I'm like, eh, you know, that's great. But I want to see new content. Yes. So that's when that's when I said, you know what? I can't pay a, a voiceover. I I, I because I don't have the money for that. I'm not. I'm not rich by any means. But I, you know, I'm. I'm not. Uh, I'm a licensed optician. You know, I make a decent paycheck. Uh, but uh, you know, so I, I said, you know, I'm going to have to do the voice. And so I had to take uh, singing lessons. And I've always been a good speaker. Uh-huh. Uh, so you know, I just had to learn how to carry a tune. And he's not going <laughs> to just piss away his money on frivolous things, you know, $10,000 on a, on a, on an animated, uh, dude, uh pizza dude, parlor I, robot. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I use my annual bonus of $5,000. <laughs> I use my uh, income tax return of five, uh, I think it was $4,000 and my third paycheck in, uh, December to get this, this damn thing. And, and it, and it, Showed up broken, so it cost. I had to rebuild it from the inside out, literally. And um, I want to ask you: are, are your parents? Are you? Are your parents still living, or are you in contact with yes. them? And if so, well, uh, have you hidden this from them? And what did you? Well, tell I'll them tell you. you what, it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay. So I, I called. I called my mom after I had like a a, a bottle of wine, and uh, <laughs> you got one of those mothers and, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, not a not a not a cup of wine, but a bottle. Uh, a of wine. bottle. And so, yeah, so I, I called her up and I said, you know, I said, you know, and, and believe you me, I've been, I joined the Navy at a, at a, at 18 at a very early age. I was in military school prior to that. So, you know, I've been my own person since literally I was 12. Okay. But, uh, and, and in my family, you know, you, once you graduate high school, you're done. Goodbye. It's not like today's you know, day and age where, you know, oh yeah, live with us until you're 40. No, it was uh, do something, join the military. So I joined the military. So when I called her, I, I said, mom, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little tipsy right now. 
but I'm, I'm going to just let you know what I bought. And, and I, I told her, and I got the complete opposite uh, uh, reaction that I thought I was going to get. Really? I thought I was going to get, Jared, what are you doing with your money? You know, what are you, what, what are you no, Did you she get said, another oh my tattoo? God, you got the king? She was like, you got the king? You love that thing. Really? So, oh. so it was, it was, it was well uh, taken by my parents, uh, the first one. <laughs> the first one. Now, now, remember, though, it was your parents who initially took you there, so yeah. they saw your eyes light up. And, you know, not exactly. every parent makes that connection, but I'm sure your mom saw that and said, wow, you know, talk about dream fulfillment and what mom doesn't want that for their son. So good for her and you. Exactly. And my dad was a, ro- a robotic fabricator, metal fabricator for Sandia Labs in New Mexico. So, you know, he had the appreciate, he appreciated it because I was getting into something new. You know, I've, I've written software, I've uh, built video game cabinets, uh, but, but, you know, I, my passion, what I'm, and I know it sounds weird, uh, you know, but my passion is the king. I mean, I love rock and roll. Yeah. I've uh, been, I've been able to, in fact, I, uh, uh, re- just recently uh, fit uh, the late um, uh, Marty Balin for his glasses. I-, I was his optician. He just passed away. Wow, and, really? Uh, From Jefferson Starship? You yep, were... it's on my Facebook. You'll see a picture of me and Marty. Um, and uh, he was, you know, I've, I've, I've hung out with uh, 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 Buddy Holly's widow, um, the lead singer of the Diamonds uh, as well, also with uh, uh, the Big Bopper's son. Uh, who has since passed away as well. But, you know, so I've had this good luck with, you know, with rock and roll, you know, and, and I love it. It's not just about who I've met. It's about the spirit of rock, and the, and it, I just love oh, okay. music. Okay, so there's so, more of a it, – it connects everything. It connects your childhood, your uh, love of music, and it and, – and, hey, whatever you do with your money and it makes you happy, that's fine. Absolutely, but and I'm, I'm, I want to give the king a new a new uh, chance at fame. But we're going to do it. You know, I'm doing it differently. He's not just an Elvis Presley impersonator. Uh-huh. I've done him as a Johnny Cash. I've done him as a Green Day uh, uh, Billy Joe for a uh, King Billy uh, from Green Day. So, uh, yeah. Okay, um, Jared Sanchez is on the phone with us, and you can see. Uh, we, there's uh, some information and a link to uh, one of the videos from his YouTube channel. It's the King Lion from Chuck E. Cheese. And I, do you guys remember, did they have one of those at our Chuck E. Cheese back in the day? Or Well, our Chuck E. Cheese back in the day used to be showbiz, and they had uh, Billy Bob, I want to say. It was a bear, but it, yeah. it looked it looked nothing like this. And like you said, it was very robotic looking. Okay, well, and they didn't have it on every at every one. These were like special locations, <gasps> and, and and so he gets it delivered to his house. And as you were describing that, it comes in a semi and a big, huge packing crate. And it made me think of that scene in Splash where Tom Hanks is going, "Wow, this is really big, and it's really here." <laughs> what do you? Yeah, what, the, what do you do? The with guy the that was delivering it, the guy that was delivering it, was looking at the invoice. He was like, oh, I guess you got the toys in here. He said, oh, "You got the big toy." You know, I, I don't know how, what kind of toy is that. And then you said, "Adult, mind your own business." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, just find the paper and I'll uh, put it up in the front there. Uh, the big toy. <laughs> Those voice lessons have paid wow, off, Jared. You're listen. a master. We had the, the guy, the Jewish guy who sold it to you. We got the trucker. We got wow. your mom. This is nice. <laughs> so now, and you'll okay. get king, too. Yeah. And you get king, too. Okay, so now you've got you these the, the robots. Where, the yeah, where do puff. you put them? Well, uh, the king goes in uh, the uh, – now, the whole thing, they, they, the articles say in my bedroom. It, it, it almost sounds like I'm sleeping with these things, but I'm not. So ever since I was uh, got an apartment on my own, I've always taken the, the largest bedroom and made it into an office uh, mm-hmm. where I'll put my computer, arcade games, you name it. You know, So I always – so when I bought my house in Carrollwood, it's a pretty big house. Uh, it's about 3,000 square feet. And and so I took the master bedroom, which is the largest room, and I made it into an office. I love collecting things like, you know, uh, He-Man and, and Friday the 13th posters, uh, you know. But 
uh, you know, so I, I always have to have an office, a dedicated office. So two of the kings, King and King Puff, are in the office. Uh, I got King John. Actually, another one is Four, which is the fourth one. We're just calling him Four right now. Uh, he works, but we're just making him, uh, you know, kind of like that. Uh, what was that '80s movie about? Uh, about that uh, short, short circuit, you know. Short so circuit, yeah. Kind of, okay. Yeah, uh, so they they hit on him, but you know, King John, King John is going to be. Uh, there's so many things that he's in the he's in the in the uh, game room with the pool table. And uh, so I've got plenty of uh, friends by me. Now, I, I'm listening to you talk about this. And if you take away, if you strip away the the Chuck E. Cheese aspect of it or the animatronic aspect of it, and you just listen to a guy talking about a, a, a passion realized, I think everybody can identify with with what you're saying. I, I just why I, no, no matter what it is, if it's an arcade game or if it's something that you saw as a kid, uh, and you held on to it for God. It's got to be what twenty, twenty five years, Jared. And now it's it's oh, yeah. it's a dream fulfilled and realized. And dude, and, let me tell you. You go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And now I bet you've had a conversation with your mother. She was very excited when the first one arrived. Was <laughs> there a conversation when she said something? Words to this effect, Jared. When is enough enough? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, my mother, I, I've explained to my parents that, you know, I want to grow it. I want to bring the king into a new light. There's so many. But if a man can put on a purple dinosaur outfit and go around prancing around saying, I love you, you love me, mm. that this this is 50 times better than that. 50. It's a nine-foot <laughs> animatronic that I can make talk to you. It, you know, so it, there's it, there's so much that can become of this. It just takes the right person to see it. It could become a sitcom. It could become a children's show. It could become anything. And, um, how, and how do you program it? Uh, because I'm assuming they came with like uh, I don't know DVDs real real. or oh they were reel to reel tapes. Reel to TIAC. It, it came with the TIAC system, which uh, you know I tried putting that. In, you know I tried turning it on, and all I could hear is <laughs> you know so that. <laughs> That didn't work, um, and I looked everywhere, and I couldn't find anything. So what happened was some fan uh, that when I was just starting uh, a couple years ago uh, messaged me and says, have you ever heard of HauntBot? And what? I said, no. So I looked him up, HauntBot.com, and uh, it, his name is Pete, and he has this little controller box that sends signals to the solenoid based on uh, keyboard uh, st- uh, strokes. So, oh. uh, so that is how I control him. You know, I, I had Aaron <clears throat> Fector. Unfortunately, I, 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 I spoke not spoke with him, but I texted him. He wanted to charge me one hundred and fifty dollars an hour just to talk with him, and I'm no. like, you know, not even an attorney charges that. Right. And he says, oh, I can make you, I can make you a machine, you know, and then it'll be five thousand dollars. To and I'm thinking to myself, I don't have five thousand dollars. So when I saw this thing and it was two hundred bucks. On on uh, hauntbots.com, I was like, sure, I'll try it. I tried it. Um, my earliest videos are still on YouTube. You'll see me. You'll hear me say, you know, holy crap, when the the mouse started moving. Right. And uh, yeah. you do that just like it's almost like Michael Scott in that one episode of The Office where he made the talking computer go boobs. You know, just because you can. That's why you do it. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> here's what I'm, Jared. Uh, Jared Sanchez is on the phone with us. He has how many now? Four. Uh, King robots Four. from Chuck E. Cheese. King was the lion. Yep. Um, I think it, it's not so much that you have them. It's the process to get there and everything that went into where you are today. Collect get, whatever, the, the fixing them, learning the voice parts, getting it all together. It's that whole experience. Creation. Start a, point A yeah. to point B. Is that what – am I right in that? Oh, you are absolutely right. It's the creative uh, sense of it. I mean – you know, I have I take uh, songs and I have to rewrite them into parody. Uh, there's a long process to it. I mean, just to get like if you check out the latest video, which is a parody of the Brady Bunch, that was a one minute video, um, and it and it took me if I had you know I had to do it on my time off. So, but it took me a good two to three days production uh, from start to finish because I have to sing the the takes and I have to do take <laughs> after take until it sounds good. 
Then I have to send it to a studio who will master it. And then I have to start filming and programming and the, the costume change, all that. But, you know, I, I created a kind of a family yeah. uh, of all this, you know. And, and, and the, I'll tell you, the, the, the second and the third and the fourth, they came like butter for some reason. It, it was almost surreal. <laughs> but, how it, dur- easy but during that three came. day process in the waiting room of an optometrist's office, there's an aging rock star going blind. I don't know. The doc will be in here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't do it at work. That's oh, sure. okay. well, yeah, you're not here. Marty Ballon was so, there. And, <laughs> so you're, right. you're, you're, you're hey, highly invested. Hey, he got his glasses. Yeah, you hear me? This right. is tough. He got his glasses. No reflux. Uh, right. <laughs> you are highly invested in this. Uh, uh, this uh, childhood, um, I don't know, reunion um, w- with whatever emotional level you are on with these characters. But it, it, but it, this has to be beyond what you ever thought would be taking place when you first saw it on eBay and said to yourself, oh, that'd be an interesting thing to have. You certainly yeah, well. That, I was more of I. I really want to own that someday. Yeah. But um, yes, you're right. It was. It's surreal. It's a dream come true. I mean, all the way to you know September first. I was contacted by the fourth, uh, by the guy who gave who gave me the third and the fourth. And talk about a dream come true. Okay. Uh, he says uh, the first email was, "Hey, my parents uh, stored a king character uh, in a coey. I live in Texas." Um, you know, do you know anybody that would be interested? And I'm like, okay, this guy is just probably going to want to, you know, try and get as much money out of me as possible. And I'm like, okay, so I call him up. I'm like, how much do you want? And he says, look, man, I love your channel. I've been watching it for uh, close to a year. He says, look, you, I'm going to fly down there next week. You help me clear out that, uh, that uh, storage facility, and you can have it. Done. And I was like, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This place hadn't been open since 1983, the storage unit. Okay, talk about a dream come true. Wow. So we go to open up the unit, and guess what? There wasn't just one king. There was two. And so you- there was two kings. There was also two of the neon signs. I looked to John, and I said, okay, John, you know, how much do you want? And he says, you can have it all. I know you're going to take them to the next level. That's I mean, cool. dude, that just doesn't happen. Right. It just doesn't, right. you know, and, and another crazy thing about the second king, the second king, uh, uh, one year prior to getting the second king, <laughs> I had posted on YouTube that I was interested in another robot, in, in getting, attaining another robot. Um, and it was, uh, it was July 13th, 2017, when I put that video out at 2.30 p.m., you want to hear something crazy? I was picking up the second robot July 13th at 2.30 p.m. Stop it. Stop. I'm right. not kidding. That... <laughs> you can't plan this no. stuff, man. Hey, hey, listen to this email that we got from a listener. Uh, Josh said, um, the band was originally called the Rock of Fire Explosion. Animated band put uh, they put it, their show into every showbiz pizza place around the country. The characters were Billy Bob. Uh... That's a separate thing. Okay. That's a separate thing. That has nothing to do with the King or even Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, show, that was, uh, showbiz that was pizza. the guy who was char- yeah, wanting to charge me a, a 150 an hour just to talk to him. All right. Uh, I went and deleted not... that email because it's not relevant to our yeah. conversation. Right. It really is. It really is. <laughs> no. and in all honesty, dude, uh, you know, look at those characters. Those would creep me out as a kid. They did. I was like, well, there's a big black gorilla playing a... Uh, 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 you know, and he looked mean, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, that's not cool to see, you well, know? You can see there's a video clip at twodorks.com. Uh, Jared Sanchez, who has uh, four of these King uh, animated robots from uh, Chuck E. Cheese, restored and brought, well, up to date, I guess. Uh, and uh, you're, I love your passion about the whole thing. It's it's just thank you. Like I said, a dream realized. You know. Well, it, we had similar conversations with guys who have been reunited with 
like the car they sold so they could this be, and, and then went off to Vietnam and then they come back and then years later their family locates the car. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's right. that kind I mean it's not just your passion for the animatronics and and the further the life of these things it's to continue the life that they gave you somehow. I don't know, it's very cool, man. It's to create something new, to create something new. I mean, you know, they told I've had people tell me, hey, that's never going to work. That's old technology. Well, you know what? That's what they told Jim Henson about his Fox puppet. Yeah. They yeah. said kids want, to, kids want to hear about cartoons. They want to see flashes. They want to, you know, and, and, but guess what he created? Yeah. He created the Muppets. And, and you know, it's that passion. And, and, that, and, and I, I, I've had some, uh, you know, you've got to take the good with the bad. And I've had people <laughs> in the beginning uh, tell me that I can't sing. I was like, well, then I'm going to take singing lessons, you know, then I'll, then I'll show you. And then, you know, then uh, uh, show tape six came out and I was able to do the Johnny Cash and all the other voices. Right. And, uh, and it sounds pretty good, dude. I listen to it in my radio, you know, and that tell and there's kids that are, that they use this as a religion, it seems. <laughs> on uh, you know, they're like, "Hail King, Hail King." <laughs> you know? so, well, we'll send cool. everybody People over. There's, there's a link to your YouTube channel on our website. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, man. Wow, very cool. Awesome. All Thank right, you guys. have a great day. See ya. All right, you too. All right, bye. bye. That's Jared Sanchez. Do you get the idea? That's not the last we're going to hear about this guy. No, wow. he, uh, there are probably more that he wants. Uh, but it's the process. Now, like I said, he had to teach himself how to do animatronics and the cylinders and the, uh, the, then the audio part of it and synchronizing it and the music and everything else beyond just, you know, getting the right costumes and everything back on it. Go to twodorks.com and you can check it out.